Hi guys and welcome back to my channel and to the second part of my series energy drains this is the third time I'm filming this video because the last two times something went wrong with my camera and my camera battery and so I am now filming with another camera which is my smaller camera and I'm hoping that it goes off well because I have very important things to share with you and I've had this video planned for so long now and I've had people asking me about this video because they wanted to know what's in part 2 and somehow something or the other was stopping me from doing this video. So hopefully now there'll be a smooth ride through this video as I share with you the second part of energy drains. Now if you've not seen the first video, it was a couple of months back where I talked about two things that drained us of our energy leaving us exhausted and tired leaving us completely feeling as if we cannot move forward in life and those two things were perfectionism and procrastination similarly we have two more things today that also leave us exhausted without us realizing and we just wonder why we are so exhausted why we are so mentally drained so the two things i'm going to talk about today are having too many things to do in life and having not enough things to do in life. It is also important that I know how to deal with these so that I'm not draining my energy. Let's start with the first one and I want to start with the one which is not having enough to do. Who would have thought that not having enough to do would actually cause us exhaustion and tiredness? None of us would even think about it, but research has shown that when we don't have much to do, when we are sitting, lazing around, we dispel energy out of our bodies. Because as humans, we are meant to work, I think. All of us know that inherently, we don't do well sitting around. And most of the time, I myself have realized that whenever I am resting for a longer period of time, so I call it resting because we think we deserve the rest, especially after a particularly busy season in life. And we think, I deserve to rest. I deserve to do nothing. And when you do nothing for maybe longer than a day, you realize that at the end of those days, you feel more exhausted than you were when you were particularly busy. And that exhaustion, that tiredness, that physical strain, mental strain is very noticeable. And you think to yourself, I should have been feeling better. I should have been feeling more relaxed, but you don't. That is your energy draining out of you. That is your energy leaving your body and that's what's causing you to feel more exhausted than when you are actually doing the work. Once we have that knowledge, once we have that understanding, how do we make it through the times when we have nothing to do or when we feel bored? Now the first tip is something that has been drilled into my mind by my dad since I was a kid and he kept saying, do not ever say that I am bored. Do not ever say that I am bored. And I have been hearing this since I was a kid. Even if I just said it for the sake of saying it, he would say, don't say that. Don't say bored. Bored should not be a part of your vocabulary. And now I realize why he said it is because we don't realize the power of our words. If we say that I am bored, if we think the thought about being bored, immediately we believe that we are bored. And when we believe that we are bored, if we get any kind of opportunity or thing to do in front of us at that time we lose interest in that because we are just thinking oh I'm bored we don't give ourselves the opportunity to do something new and so this is my first tip that never ever think to yourself or say out loud that you are bored because if you say it it will become true now tip number two is just to get started now I know Everybody out there has had this feeling when they are resting after a busy time, busy season, busy period and we're resting even at the end of the day and the biggest hardship is to get ourselves up and start doing something. That's the struggle. It's just easier to sit in one place and continue 
browsing the internet or scrolling to Instagram instead of getting up. But once we get up, we realize that we are able to do more things. And so the first thing would be to just get started. Don't start with something big. If you think that I need to get up and do some great thing, you will not get up because that's a big struggle in itself. And motivating yourself to get up and do something big and grand and great is not going to work. So start with something small. Now all of us have small to-dos, chores that we have to do around the house or for our families or just anything on our list that regardless of how busy or free we are, we still have to do them. For example, laundry or washing the dishes or tidying up a cupboard or organizing something. Those are things that are always on our list and those are small things that we can convince ourselves to just get up and do. So if you are feeling a little bit lazy, if you are relaxing and finding it hard to get started, just get up and do something small. Just go clean something up or wash the dishes. And that sets you on the path of momentum. That gives you the momentum to do something after that. And once you get that momentum going, the next thing to do is something that is also a kind of tip within this tip and that is to have a list of things that you have always wanted to do and you've not had the time to do it so have a running list all of us have desires or ambitions or goals in our mind that we don't have time in our regular life to do so we say someday i'm going to do this or someday i'm going to do that it might be as simple as taking a trip somewhere it might be as simple as exploring your neighborhood it might be getting your or hair colored or meeting a friend you haven't met for a long time so have a running list have it on your phone because the phone's the easiest place to have it on anytime you think of something that oh i need to do this but i don't have the time right now put it down on your list and when you're in a space where you feel you have nothing to do you look at that list and see what can be done in the time period you have give yourself the momentum by doing smaller chores and then look at your list and actually get it done and you have the time to do it now now my third tip is to use this time when you have lesser things to do to refocus yourself and refocus your life when we're busy we get caught up in the momentum of it all and we don't dwell on the fact or don't dwell on our life and we don't think about what we are doing why we are doing it whether we're doing it for our pleasure or we're doing it for somebody else's pleasure we don't think all these things because we're caught up in the rat race so to speak but when you have nothing to do when you have lesser things to do that is the best time to review your life and refocus your attention on things that you want to do next so take that time use it for introspection and see whether the direction you're heading in is the right one if it is you will be very sure of what to do next and you can start your next step but if you think you're not on the right track it's the best time to refocus yourself and get on the right track and see what's next for you there none of us wants to feel exhausted none of us wants to feel tired all the time we want to feel productive we want to feel energetic and always doing something or the other whether small or big is what brings energy back into our lives now coming to the next energy drain and that is having too much to do again this is something that all of us have experienced and you might say that it is a part and parcel of life but let me tell you that yes it is a part and parcel of life but there comes a point over which if you keep trying to fit things in your life you will start losing energy all of you know this scenario where you have different things pulling at you from different parts of your life at the same time and in that moment you don't know which way to look so you are just looking around so confused so lost and that is where your energy is going to be drained the first tip that i can give you is learn to say no 
Many of us don't have that skill or ability or inclination to say no because we are very worried about what people will think about us and we are very worried about hurting other people's feelings. So we say yes to anything and everything that comes our way. Firstly thinking that I should be careful not to hurt somebody's feeling and sometimes thinking that anything that comes my way is supposed to be mine so I need to say yes to it. It is important first and foremost to realize that you don't need to say no to these people permanently so suppose a friend wants a favor and you are not able to do it at this moment because you have another deadline coming up you need to be able to explain to your friend that I have this deadline coming up can I help you with that tomorrow or day after tomorrow or this weekend same goes with your boss same goes with your family you need to be honest with people. I think people respect honesty. When you explain to them the situation, I don't think anybody will have a bad impression of you. And even if they did, I think it shouldn't matter because at the end of the day, what matters is whatever you do, you need to do wholeheartedly. Now let's come to the second scenario where we believe anything that comes our way was meant to be ours and is an opportunity and we should say yes to it. Although I agree to it in principle that some things that come knocking at your door, you need to say yes to. I also believe that we need to use our minds, which we have been gifted with to weigh what is coming our way, to see whether it falls in line with what we believe in for our life and our journey and our destination. Yes, there are some things that happen that are out of our plan, out of our way, but once they come in, it is very easy to see whether they are of value to our life or not. If we can say that Honestly, that is something that will add value to my life or value to my existence and value to my meaning and my purpose, then do it for sure, go for it. But if it does not add value, if it takes away your time from your priorities, then say no. Because just because you got the call doesn't mean it was the right number. Now, the second tip to ensuring that you don't get overwhelmed by life is to focus on one thing at a time. As I said, our energy drains out of us when we have too many things and we don't know which one to start with. So the best way to start is to choose one item of priority, do it and finish it. This unfortunately we don't do nowadays because we've learned and we believe that multitasking is the way to go. But research has shown that multitasking is a myth. Multitasking can only work when you are doing two tasks out of which one requires your mind, one doesn't. You can drive a car and listen to an audiobook because driving a car doesn't require your mind as much but listening to an audiobook and internalizing what you're learning does need your mind but if you have two things that require equal mental energy you will not be able to multitask and you will end up giving lesser percentage of yourself to each of those tasks and you will not complete it in the way you would have if you would have focused on one thing at a time so pick one thing just look at what you have to do pick one thing focus on it until you finish it and then move on to the next one that's going to help you ensure that at least you're getting things done one thing at a time my third tip to you when you feel overwhelmed is if you are in a place where you're very overwhelmed when you're very exhausted and tired of everything just take a break because your mind will not be able to cope if you just try to push through things and try to get things done because your mind needs that rest your body needs that rest so whether it is a small break like just going out and walking around the block or having a short nap if you're someone who can have a short nap or calling up a friend and having a conversation calling up your mom and having a conversation or even ending the day early so that you can go home, unwind and relax and come back the next day refreshed. Those are things that you can do to take a break because your mind and your body need a break. And that is something that in our fast-paced world, we don't give too much attention to. 
we believe that when we are overwhelmed the last thing we should be doing is stopping what we are doing but trust me that's the best thing you can do because when we are tired when we are exhausted our emotions get the best of us our mind is not as clear so we make mistakes our accuracy level goes down we get worked up about the smallest of things we argue with people all these things happen when we are tired and we are not able to focus on things which means that when we are tired we take longer to do something than if we had taken a break and come back so whether you are in a place where you have nothing to do or you're in a place where you are overwhelmed by everything that is going on i hope that this video was useful to you to understand why you are feeling exhausted why you are feeling mentally drained and realize what you can do to improve your situation energy is a very important resource that we have and if we are letting it get away from us we are the losers because energy is what makes the world go around i believe because we might have intentions we might have desires we might have goals we might have ambitions but unless and until we have the energy to execute what we want to do we will be unable to reach our goals reach our ambitions and succeed in the way we want to succeed so thank you for watching this video if you like this video please click on the like button and also click on the subscribe button if you are one of the people who have not subscribed to my channel